Home to a pile of beloved video game IPs, THQ Nordic has spent the last decade adding fantastic new entries to fan-favorite franchises, ensuring cherished classics are carefully restored so they can be enjoyed for years to come, and creating brand new IPs with exciting worlds for players to explore. I'm Jess and we're here to celebrate THQ Nordic's 10 year anniversary by taking a look at 10 iconic titles from the last decade. Make sure to drop your favorites down in that comment section. Number 1. Wreckfest Fest 2018's Wreckfest revitalized the long-adored and nearly abandoned demolition derby genre and cut no corners on its impressively refined mechanics. The superb collision system is so satisfying, the difficulty curve is tough but fair, and even when your best laid plan goes sideways, you'll still find yourself with a handful of credits at the end that you can spend on new cars and parts. There's a beautiful chaos in trying to make your way to the front of the pack, and wrecking your opponents with a well-placed smash is pretty damn close to pure joy. There's a ton of variety in the race options, and the visual fidelity of the game world makes drifting around corners fun, even when you're the one getting wrecked. That's more likely to happen in realistic mode, where it doesn't take much for a crunch to take you out of the race, but with those high stakes comes an opportunity to prove mastery of the game's systems. The combo of excellent driving physics, the attention to detail in how various cars and road surfaces feel and change the way you drive, and as I said, the joy of smashing your way to the head of the pack, has made Wreckfest a fan favorite not just in THQ Nordic's catalog, but in the realm of racing games too. Number 2. Darksiders Now there's no way we could talk about THQ greats and not mention the legacy of fantasy hack and slash series Darksiders. The first game arrived in 2010, introducing us to absolute badass War, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. With its striking art style, engrossing story and fluid combat, accompanying War on his quest to clear his name after being falsely accused of bringing about the apocalypse early is a journey we're super keen to be on. Then in 2012 we got Darksiders 2, which focused on War's brother Death in an epic tale told in parallel to the events of the first game. Slashing through foes and riding through the sprawling, saturated game world is a blast, and the boss fights are especially engaging. If you're into dungeon crawling and feeling super smart by solving a smattering of puzzles, there's plenty of that in here for you too. If you never got around to the first two Darksiders games and now you're thinking maybe you should've, THQ Nordic released Darksiders War Mastered Edition and Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition. That's hard to say, but I like what they did there. When the Darksiders IP found a new home with THQ Nordic, we got Darksiders 3 and Darksiders Genesis. Darksiders 3 featured a new story told in parallel with the events of its predecessors, but this time you control Fury in her quest to hunt down the seven deadly sins. Darksiders 3 presents players with the greatest level of challenge in the series so far. You level up by trading in enemy souls for levels and items, and dying will result in you losing the souls you hold, so the stakes in combat are understandably high. As a result, refining your skills and improving your prowess is immensely satisfying, as is exploring the sprawling, interconnected game environments. Darksiders Genesis released in 2019, and with this entry, THQ Nordic again proved their comfort in letting the series flex the boundaries of genre expectations. Developed by Airship Syndicate, Genesis tells the story of the Horsemen at the very beginning of their journey. It focuses on the stoic war and the wisecracking strife. The gameplay shifts to a top-down perspective this time around, but it's no less effective. Attacks are still extraordinarily smooth and fluid, there's a satisfying complex progression system, puzzling still makes an appearance, and new abilities let you access previously inaccessible areas, so there's plenty of reasons to play and replay locations. The gorgeous high contrast and highly saturated visuals remain, as does the dungeon crawling, loot chasing, and visceral combat. But Genesis again proves that tightly following a genre formula isn't necessary, as this is still absolutely identifiable as a Darksiders game, through and through. With its chaotic and colorful world, dense dark fantasy narrative, exciting combat, and ability to lean comfortably into so many different genre styles, it's no wonder that Darksiders has absolutely established itself as a cult classic. Number 3. Destroy All Humans <laughs> 
get used to that phrase cult classic because it's gonna come up a lot. This time in reference to the tongue-in-cheek, incredibly silly but absolutely delightful Destroy All Humans. For the uninitiated, Destroy All Humans is an open-world action-adventure that was first released in 2005 and puts you in the little grey shoes of Crypto 137. It's a wonderfully silly time, presenting like a B-grade sci-fi film set in the 1950s. You're an alien tasked with recovering alien technology from Earth and mining humans for alien DNA. It's delightfully camp and refreshingly absurd especially in a sea of very serious games. The gameplay ranges from utilizing your psychokinetic ability Hollow Bob to emulate the appearance of any nearby human, to pointing your death ray at anybody you'd like to see significantly less alive. The latest entry from 2020 remastered the original and was highly appreciated by fans for respecting and recreating everything that was great about the original and being unashamedly silly and fun. The unique setting and gameplay mechanics make it very clear the intention is, in essence, to provide a great sandbox to play in, and it definitely succeeds at that. There are puns and references abound, and the bizarre tone of the game has had a lot of players appreciating this wonderful example of a game that doesn't need to take itself quite so seriously. Number 4. Elix As an open world RPG junkie, I was a huge fan of the gothic games as a kid. Now for the uninitiated, the gothic games came out around the early 2000s and were made by Piranha Bytes, excitingly set to be remade by THQ Nordic sometime in the future, for which I'm waiting as patiently as I can. Cult classics Gothic 1 and Gothic 2 are often cited by fans as their all-time favourite RPGs, and for good reason. The world building and lore are deep and engaging, the experience of playing is especially immersive, and the open world design has received significant praise for respecting the player's intelligence and agency. In 2009, Piranha Bytes developed a new series called Risen, a gorgeous spiritual successor to Gothic where, like all good RPGs, you begin the game washed up on a beach with only the clothes on your back. It's up to you to decide where you go from there. Fast forward to 2017 and Piranha Bytes teamed up with THQ Nordic to create Elix, a new RPG set in a post-apocalyptic sci-fi universe. Elix proved itself to be more of what Gothic and Risen fans wanted to see, a massive world with loads of stories to tell, locations to explore, and a combat system that has a satisfying level of challenge. The game also features a main quest that's genuinely engrossing and plenty of fascinating side quests bolstered by great writing and voice acting. There's also a handful of interesting decisions you'll need to make. And there's a jetpack. We can't forget the jetpack. Alongside the impressive character progression pathways, consistent rewards for exploration, and wonderful atmosphere we've come to expect from the studio, this one is a must play. THQ Nordic has also announced that Elix 2 is on its way, so that's absolutely one you're gonna want to keep an eye out for. Number 5. The Book of Unwritten Tales While iconic RPGs are certainly a staple of THQ Nordic's back catalogue, there are plenty of other genres represented too, one of which is classic point-and-click adventure games. The Book of Unwritten Tales is another THQ Nordic series that decides to forego the dark and moody and make you laugh instead. Well, it'll make you laugh and think, which is kind of the duality of every great point-and-click adventure game if you ask me. Developed by King Art, this gorgeous 2012 adventure and its sequel, which arrived in 2015, have a wonderful sense of humour, combined with some fantastic puzzles. If you've hit adventure game fatigue over those adventure games where everything seems to be life and death and you just want to go back to when everything was outrageous and silly, this is absolutely the series for you. Much like Wreckfest, this series took a wonderful genre that had all but disappeared and dragged it back out into the modern day. You'll explore a bright fantasy world through the lens of four different lovable characters and attempt to solve all sorts of puzzles. The game is beloved for its light-hearted energy, funny dialogue, great story, and revitalization of classic point-and-click adventure game mechanics. Okay, after saying all that, I kinda just want to go play this one right now, but we have plenty more iconic titles to come, so let's keep going. Number 6. Titan Quest Anniversary Edition An absolute classic from the THQ back catalogue is Titan Quest, originally released in 2007 by Iron Law Entertainment. 
The action RPG became a hit among fans for nailing its core mechanics, offering up an engrossing campaign for players to engage in, and creating a graphically impressive world for players to get lost in. For the game's 10-year anniversary, THQ Nordic released Titan Quest Anniversary Edition, which combined the original and its expansion Titan Quest Immortal Throne into one game. This one particularly resonated with players who enjoyed the generous spread of skills, really letting them hone their chosen playstyle, as well as those who appreciated the generous dose of mythology. Players who enjoy isometric dungeon crawlers will be right at home with this one. The gameplay is really solid, and the story is especially interesting as it steps away from the familiar D&D style setting that gamers have already seen time and time again. Exploring the environments is exciting, the loot chase is rewarding, and the new edition is absolutely packed with content, especially with the Ragnarok and Atlantis expansions. The replayability factor here is also super high, which is handy because if you played this one once, I'm guessing you're probably going to want to play it again. Number 7. Desperados 3 2001 brought us Desperados Wanted Dead or Alive, which was a real-time strategy game very reminiscent of Commandos behind enemy lines. The game had you control six characters in a Wild West setting who were trying to stop a notorious villain called El Diablo. Desperados 2 Cooper's Revenge released in 2006, delivering another dose of the series to fans, but they'd have to wait over a decade for Desperados 3. The third installment was developed by Mimimi Games and published by THQ Nordic. Luckily, patient fans were absolutely rewarded, as the game was just what they were after. This time around, you controlled five characters, and the game is set before the events of the first game. Each character has their own distinctive personality, and they all possess a range of unique skills that usually need to be combined in the right manner to resolve an obstacle and move forward. Each highly tactical scenario gives you access to different characters, so you'll have to be flexible in adapting your approach. The graphics are gorgeous, the tone is refreshingly light as characters often banter with one another, and the stealth mechanics in particular provide players with a solid amount of challenge. If you're a fan of turn-based tactical games and you happen to have a soft spot for the Wild West, this is definitely one to keep on your radar. Number 8. MX vs ATV Supercross For anyone wondering if Wreckfest was going to be the only racing game on this list, fear not. There's room for another Speed Fiend friendly entry, and here it is. The fifth entry in the MX vs ATV franchise, Supercross, lets players race Supercross on motocross bikes or ATVs, as the name would imply. The game features 17 tracks, a career mode with five series, and over 80 motocross companies in the game are represented. This entry also added a new physics and control system, let you join multiplayer matches with up to 12 players and achieve the holy grail of console racing games. That is, it lets you play split screen. With sprawling options for customization and a great soundtrack, racing your mates or other opponents on the track is pretty darn fun. Not to mention the Encore Edition released in 2015, which added twice as many tracks, a new rhythm racing mode, remastered audio, and 20 more professional riders to test your medal against. The game ensures players get the sensation of realistic racing while still helping beginners ease their way in. For old school fans of the series, there is a hefty dose of nostalgia to be found here. Number 9. Spellforce 3 The Spellforce series has established itself as a cult favourite, yes I told you it was coming around again, ever since its first entry in 2003. The series is marked by its combination of real-time strategy and role-playing gameplay. The high fantasy series has seen various developers and publishers throughout its mainline entries and expansions. The most recent mainline entry, Spellforce 3, was developed by Grimlaw Games and published by THQ Nordic. The game originally hit PCs everywhere in 2017, though an upgraded version called Spellforce 3 Reforced is due to arrive on current and last generation PlayStation and Xbox consoles, as well as their old favourite PC. Spellforce 3 takes place in 518, before the events of the first game. It features a cast of characters who all have their own unique backstories and abilities. The game has been celebrated for its enormously detailed visual design, gorgeous setting, electric voice acting, and compelling fantasy narrative. 
It's also received praise for successfully combining the RTS and RPG genres in a way that feels unique, especially in how elements of each fit neatly into the story. Perhaps Eurogamer put it best when they said, Spellforce 3 is the best Baldur's Gate meets Age of Mythology ever. Spellforce 3 is yet another example of a THQ Nordic game attempting to do something out of the box and totally succeeding. We've got one game left and it absolutely follows that trend. Number 10, Biomutant. It's only sensible that our final entry be the most recent iconic THQ Nordic title and one that I did a playthrough for on their YouTube channel. Of course, we're talking about Biomutant. Proving there are still great new IPs to be discovered in 2021, Biomutant is a gloriously dense RPG with a complex character building system, intricate combat mechanics, and the ability to play as a little fuzzy warrior in a brilliantly vibrant world. All the building blocks you'd want to see in an RPG are there, and then some. There are factions you can choose to support or oppose, abilities to acquire, a comprehensive loot and gear customization system, weapon crafting, and combat that combines the best of what RPGs and action games have to offer. Success in combat is achieved by optimizing your character sheet, picking the best weapon for the job, and executing attacks that can be learned as you progress through the game. Honestly, even that is just the tip of the iceberg. Between its engaging main story, rewarding exploration, and just sitting back to enjoy the extremely pretty world, this is absolutely a game to get delightfully lost in. That's the end of our list. Do let me know down in that comment section which THQ Nordic favorites would make yours. I've been Jess, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Make sure you stay tuned to THQ Nordic's YouTube channel as there's plenty more good things to come as they continue to celebrate their 10 year anniversary. I'll see you again soon.